Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today in this meeting and thanks Midas team for the webinar invitation. The subject is a wear and trust bridge with lateral composite deck and train traffic load. This presentation is not supposed to be a step-by-step -step analysis but more a general presentation about the way you can design this kind of bridge with Midas civil tools. I'll try to detail the main criterion that leads to final sizing for this structure with train traffic. My goal is to cover all subjects that seem relevant to me about this bridge type with structural steel material, concrete, and composite structure. I really hope to find it exhaustive, and now, let's start. About the content, first of all, I'll present you SG Ingenierie, the Luxembourg design office where I work. Then I'll shortly introduce myself and my experience. After that, the technical part will start with the subject of this webinar the Warren Trust Bridge with a first an overview. I'll share my reflection about modeling choices. After that, the presentation will cover Midas Civil Tools that were used for this design. Construction stages analysis will be approached with how you can model different parts of the structure. The necessity to perform dynamic analysis will also be checked with egg-in frequency. Then I'll treat my favorite part, steel analysis with the way you can deal with sizing in depth, starting from a grillage model and finishing with finite element models. Composite structure will also be designed with the elements forming lateral composite deck. And when finishing this presentation, I'll share my opinion about relevant details that an engineer needs to keep in mind when modeling this structure with train traffic. Now let me introduce SG. SG is a medium-sized company with around 120 employees. Before being called SGI, that means General Society for Industry, the company was created in 1898 as the Franco-Swiss Society for Electrical Industry. Today, our company is composed by two offices, one in Luxembourg and the other in Switzerland. The company reached 22 million euros benefits and is active in over 30 countries. In my opinion, SGE strength is the ability to cover different fields of competencies with different clusters in terms of design skills, SGE gathers electrical, HVAC, buildings, infrastructure, and of course, bridge engineers. SGE also regroup bridges, inspectors, and construction sites, sorry, construction site supervising. All these competencies and our ability to exchange views together is, in my opinion, the reason this company is efficient for multitask projects. Now, a little presentation of myself. My name is Pierre Valentin. As you can hear, I am from France and did my engineer studies in Toulouse. In particular, I am a civil engineer graduated from INSA school. In SGI Luxembourg, I am working for seven years as project manager and structural engineer in Bridges department. Here you can see some recent projects I worked on. On the top, I wanted to show Bridges construction stage pictures made last year for CFL project. CFL Group managed the Luxembourg National Rail Network. I had the opportunity to work on the tunnel protection before the installation of multiple railway tracks in Luxembourg station. The deck is composed with preflex beams and preflex process permitted us to design a thin deck with 25 meter span. On the right, you can see a steel U-beam being, lift being lifted. This project goal was to ensure ballastic track continuity and replace previous deck where rays were directly fixed on the structure. For this uh, small span, here 12 meters, we propose this structure to maximize height under the deck for vehicle circulation. On the bottom, you can see pictures for an ongoing project for Luxtram. This client managed tramway network and this composite box girder will contribute to extend tramway transport in Luxembourg between Kirchberg Business District and Luxembourg Airport. This composite deck will support two tramway tracks and will length 110 meters. As you can see on the, the right part of the screen, steel U-beam and composite box girder were both designed using Midas Civil program. Compared to completed bridges, I wanted to share these construction stages pictures because this part of the project step reflects the lively part of our work and the opportunity to share with construction companies. Now let's focus on this webinar subject, Warren Trust Bridge. 
Here are some extra extracts of the Revit model of the bridge. Bridge span is 75 meters and the assemblies between beams are welded. As a result, fixed boundary between elements will be applied. There are 5 bottom cords and 4 top cords. Length of these elements is 15 meters. As you can notice, 3 upper lateral struts stabilize top cords which are under compression. Bottom and top cord sections are steel boxes. End posts are also box sections to ensure good compression resistance and the transfer of vertical reactions between supports and top structure. Current diagonals are high section. A lateral composite deck constitutes the floor and links the two wire trusses. Width of the composite structure is 9.1 meter. Between each laminate beam, precast concrete panels will support wet concrete during pouring step. About traffic nature, our bridge will support a curved railway track. The curvature of the track, combined with the straight direction of the lateral wire trusses, is the reason why the deck lateral span is over 9 meters. Traffic type will be freight trains and the maximum speed is 80 km per hour. Traffic speed is an important parameter for structural design, in particular for fatigue stress verifications as per Eurocode 3. Now let's see how the bridge is supported. This picture is an extract of Midas civil model. Static scheme is illustrated with four supports. Curved railway track is colored in red. As you can see, the structure is isostatic with longitudinally fixed bearing on one side and no longitudinal restrictions on the other side. Movements of the bridge are in accordance with raised joints and about the bearing type, spherical bearings are considered and these products have good performances. They can handle large rotations and high loads and they also enable low coefficient of frictions. Now that we have a general idea of these bridge features, it's time to think about the way we can model the bridge. With Warren Truss, a structural steel analysis is required as per Eurocode 3. Lateral composite deck requires a composite steel and concrete design as per Eurocode 4. And longitudinally, reinforced concrete deck requires an analysis as per Eurocode 2. As Midas Civil offers multiple tools to design beam elements as per different norms, it would be a shame not to use it. This is why a grid model is an efficient modeling option that gives accurate results. I think we all agree about modeling Warren structure with steel beams. And for composite deck, we will consider transverse composite beams linked to Warren truss and longitudinal concrete beams in order to design the deck longitudinally. About the composite deck, a model with plate elements for concrete and beam elements for laminate steel girders could be an option. However, with two element types, the difficulty will be to group forces results in order to design the composite section. That's to say, we should take forces and moments for concrete plate elements, considering effective width, and add steel beam forces. This option is feasible but requires time and is not compatible with Midas Civil design section. These reasons are why I propose a grid model. In addition to this first model and when main section will be defined, we will use finite elements for a further analysis. I'll introduce rigid, rigid link boundaries that permit transitions from beam elements to plate elements. And thanks to this option, we will check local stresses in structural steel part and design stiffness. In particular, local modeling will be used to validate steel structures subjected to fatigue stresses with our railway traffic. Here is a video extract of our media civil model. So you can see the 75 uh, length Warren Truss Bridge. Here is the lateral view. You can only see beam axis if you want. About the front view, you can see I modeled rigid elastic links to connect uh, bottom cords with supports. Here are the diagonals, I section. I 
I created structure group for each element type. So here you can only see the warrant trust steel structure. About section properties, top cords are modeled with box section. So we have four diff different beams between each diagonal. Here are the lateral struts that reinforce top cords under compression. And lateral struts are also box sections. About the bottom cords, they are also modeled as box section, but in order to model web stiffeners, general section was required. This is why I imported a section file for this specific section. So here are the diagonal I section. The end posts are boxy section to ensure good compression resistance. So you can also active all structural elements. Here is a front view. And um, as you can see, the Warren structure has an offset, a lateral offset. And this method permits to model a coherent length for the lateral composite deck. So, lateral composite elements are 9.1 meters. This is a offset. So, diagonals, bottom cords, and top cords. They all have a lateral offset. Now that I introduced structural steel section properties, let's have a look on the composite deck elements. I created different groups for composite beam elements and reinforced concrete elements. So selected in red, you can see the grid model for composite deck. Here, composite and concrete element, beam elements are selected with the lateral view. Now I only select composite beam elements And as you can see, each beam section includes a concrete slab. Width of the slab is in accordance with beam spacing, that's to say around 1.5 meter. About the composite beam properties, concrete material has the characteristic strength of 35 MPa. And structural steel has a yield strength of 355 MPa. There are also concrete precast panels that are not considered structurally, and this is why there is an 8 cm space between I section and concrete flange. At both ends of the composite deck, I model a specific composite beam with box section. Material properties are the same as current composite beams. About the transition between bottom cords and composite beams, I also created steel sections. So 
I'm gonna select only the bottom chord and the steel structural steel elements. Here and with weld and rigid connection, forces are transmitted between structural steel elements at the embedded node. So the length of lateral steel elements is only a few centimeters and will permit to check steel sections submitted to an embedded moment. As you can see, a vertical offset is included for lateral composite deck elements. And for bottom cords, the web stiffeners is at the same position than top flange of lateral beams. Now that the model and main section properties are introduced, we can prepare the construction stage analysis. Construction stage analysis requires to prepare different groups that are going to be activated or deactivated for each construction step. Groups are listed between three different types. There are structure groups, which include warren truss, composite beams, and also concrete beams. Then we have boundary groups with supports and also beam end release. And the last one is load groups with self-weight concrete pouring and superstructures load. In construction stages setting, each group, each group can be activated or deactivated for a specific step. Construction stages analysis also involves including time parameter. This is why time-dependent properties will be configured for concrete behavior. Time-dependent properties with concrete creep and concrete shrinkage are configured in properties tab. Concerning composite section parameters, for example the stage selection in which composite properties are applied, we will need to select the load tab. You can see the process on the right part of the screen. For this analysis, concrete pouring will be modeled by a beam load on composite beams. For concrete pouring, only steel part of composite beam is activated. After this stage, when activating composite structure and concrete elements, Concrete weight has to be neglected because weight has already been included in a specific beam load. This reason is why density of concrete, of concrete elements are equal to zero in material properties. Now let's see how material properties are set. We go to properties tab, material properties. First structural steel is S355. Properties are detailed below. Here is the concrete data for composite beams. Concrete weight will be neglected in load tab and composite section properties. So we have one concrete material for composite beam and also another concrete material with density equal to zero is created for longitudinal concrete beams. Last material corresponds to the line track for moving load. This element has no structural purpose and has negligible sizes and resistance properties and of course no weight density. About the composite elements, we set parameters in load tab. So we go to load tab, composite section for construction stages. And you can see there are two materials. Steel material is activated when element is activated. And second material is concrete material. You can activate concrete in a specific stage here after pouring. And uh, about the concrete weight, a scale factor is applied in order to neglect self-weight of concrete.
Before construction stage analysis, we also need to define time-dependent properties of concrete linked with composite beams. Here are the different material properties. This one corresponds to the concrete slab of composite beams. And this part is about time-dependent properties. So first, we have shrinkage as per Eurocode 2. Here are the parameters. We have the concrete strengths of composite beams and also relative humidity of ambient environment. 80% is for Luxembourg parameter. The notional size of member is also required. It's approximately twice the thickness of a concrete slab. And we want a design as per Eurocode 2.2 associated with concrete bridge. Time dependent compression strength is also parametered. Now that we have shrinkage set and also compression strength set, we can link these parameters with the material property of concrete slab. For this, we have to click on material link, select the material property associated with composite beams, and define creep and shrinkage, but also compression strengths as per your code 2. Now that material properties are set, let's have a look on the different structure groups. First, we have a group for the Warren structure with structural steel. As you can see, bottom cord is connected with composite beam elements. We also have a specific group for the current composite beams with steel eye section and also the end composite beams with a specific steel box section. About the longitudinal property of composite deck, we have concrete beams. Each beam has a width of 50 cm. Last group is not structural. It's a, a dummy beam that will be useful for a traffic load setting. Now structure groups are set. I'm going to show you the boundaries group. So first, we have a support group, which includes the four different supports, and also the rigid elastic links required to connect the bottom cord to the support. In addition to the supports group, we also have a beam and release group, I'm going to explain later how this beam and release group is useful. About loads, we have a self-weight group. And concerning beam loads, we have different groups corresponding to different steps of the construction stage analysis. 
we have a load group corresponding to the concrete pouring step and also a superstructure group for different lo loads such as asphalt protection or also ballast load. Here are the concrete pouring group and below superstructure group. Different groups are now set. We can configure construction stage analysis. First step include steel structure group. The round truss is joined in one block. As the assemblies are welded, bending moment is transferred between Warren components. Therefore, Warren structure is not an articulated structure, and bending moment isn't neglected. About lateral composite beam, only steel will be activated. High steel beams will support wet concrete weight before activation of composite sections. Support boundary group is also activated. This group includes supports, but also rigid elastic links that connect bottom cord with supports. Also, transverse beams are simply supported because we consider that lateral beams are only supported by Warren bottom cords before welding step. This is why we required a specific group for beam end release. Beam end release group permits to have a provisory articulated join between lateral beams and bottom cords. About load group, self weight is also activated. Second step is concrete pouring. Welded joints between lateral beam and Warren bottom truss are made before concrete pouring. Therefore, we can deactivate beam end release and joints at the end of the lateral beams won't be a pinned connection, but rather a fixed connection with Warren structure. About the load, we activate the concrete pouring group that corresponds to a beam load including wet concrete weight and also precast concrete panels weight. Next step is concrete shrinkage stage. Now that wet beam load is applied, we can activate concrete slab of lateral composite beams. In the tab composite section for concrete stage analysis, concrete material for composite beam is activated for concrete shrinkage stage. As this material is associated with time dependent properties, creep and shrinkage effects are also activated. The duration is defined as 28 days in order to reach concrete characteristic strengths. Next step is superstructures load. These loads are applied on longitudinal concrete beams and we have to activate this structure group. Superstructures load group is also activated and correspond to dead loads such as asphalt protection, ballast and highway track components. Final step will correspond to the dummy beam activation required for moving load analysis. Here is a recap of construction stages analysis. First stage is about activating structural steel. Concerning structural structure group, we active Warren structure and also lateral composite beams. About boundaries, supports are activated and also beam end releases. About load group, self weight is activated. Here is a display of this stage. You can see in green that beam end releases are activated, also supports and rigid elastic links. Next stage is concrete pouring. For this stage, we deactivate beam end releases because of welds and we active concrete pouring load group.
in the display option we can check if beam loads are applied upon the structure in concrete pouring stage you can see there are no more beam end releases and we can check that concrete pouring load is applied third stage is concrete shrinkage the stage duration is 28 days and for this stage we activated concrete slab of composite elements you can see that concrete slab displays for this stage. Next step is about activating longitudinal concrete beams. Now you can see the gray edge model. Next step is about activating superstructure load group. The duration of this stage is 1000 days in order to apply creep effect superstructure groups load group is applied on longitudinal concrete beam And final, final stage is about activating dummy beam. This dummy beam is required for moving load analysis. In addition to this video recap, here is a list of the different loads included in construction stages analysis. Dead loads have been estimated as per year code 1. Weight of structural elements is included in self-weight group. Wet concrete was taken into account with a specific beam load. And superstructure group gives us asphalt protection weight, ballast and railway track weight, and also concrete elements that form pedestrian path. These superstructure loads are applied on longitudinal concrete beams. Besides, in this construction stages analysis, time-dependent effects were taken into account as per Eurocode 2. On the right part of the screen is displayed displacement results after superstructure stage. Maximum vertical displacement is around 7 cm at mid-span of the bridge. Permanent actions have been defined. We can now list variable actions applied on completed bridge structure. Main action is moving load. Train load is set as per Eurocode 1, Section 2. Train model LM71 is chosen for vertical effect of traffic load. For this study, railway track will include guardway and we don't have to consider a load case with accidental situation. About horizontal forces, 
braking and, and acceleration forces will be considered. As we have a curved railway track, we also need to take into account centrifugal loads. Besides, 100 kilonewton noising force will be combined with vertical traffic load. Another variable load is temperature. As the bridge includes different materials with different thermal coefficients, thermal effects might be significant. The table below groups uniform thermal variations estimated as per Eurocode 1. In particular, we notice that thermal variation is important for structural steel material. Last variable load is wind action, also estimated as per Eurocode 1. The bridge environment needs to be defined with structure height and terrain category. Among the different factors that lead to wind forces, a solidity ratio has been estimated, by analogy with latest structures. Therefore, I, cal I calculated the lateral force applied on Warren Truss. For this force, I chose the same direction as traffic centrifugal load. All these variable loads will be included into load combinations for post-construction stage analysis. Concerning traffic load, a specific method is used for the Griage deck model. On the moving load tab, we need to select traffic line lane cell. The only transverse distribution is set with wheel spacing. Here, we indicate the raised spacing of 1.5 meters. The moving load will be distributed on transverse composite beams. These composite beams need to be included in a cross beam group that will be chosen for vehicular load distribution. About the traffic line lane selection, we will pick beam elements that constitute the dummy beam. Concerning train load distribution, there is no transverse distribution apart from raised spacing. However, the longitudinal distribution under railway ties can be estimated as per Eurocodes. Railway ties spacing will be 60 cm. We can also consider lateral eccentricity. The alpha coefficient can be specified as well as dynamic coefficient. As recommended in Eurocode 1 section 2, determinant lengths will be twice the determinant lengths of transverse composite beams. If we consider that a fixed connection links Warren structure with composite deck, the determinant length is equal to 12.6 meters. For carefully maintained track, the calculation leads to a dynamic coefficient of 1.25. Here is a recap of the moving load setting with Midas Civil Program. Moving load code is Eurocode. The traffic line lanes is also defined. About vehicles, we have to select the model 71 as per your code 1 section 2. Alpha coefficient of 1.21 is also indicated, and longitudinal distribution of forces is also set with highway ties spacing of 60 cm. You also have to indicate the dynamic factor of 1.25. And finally, we have to set the load cases with by selecting the traffic line lanes and the vehicle. In addition to moving load, I will show you the other variable actions. Let's start with the negative uniform temperature variation. For this load case, we have different variation of temperature for different material types. First one is Warren structure with the highest variation. We also have a variation of temperature for concrete longitudinal elements. Okay. 
And last one is variation of temperature for transverse composite beams. Another load case is a breaking load. I simplified the load case and applied longitudinal forces on longitudinal concrete beams. I used the same approach about centrifugal forces. Here is the centrifugal forces for a vehicle posi position at mid-span. Last variable action is wind transverse forces. I applied these forces on Warren structure. And as you can see, it has the same direction as centrifugal forces. We have now a complete model of the bridge. Every structural elements have been defined, as well as load cases. We can run analysis and start the design part. Among different verifications, requirement for dynamic analysis has to be checked. Eurocode 1 section 2 proposes a flowchart that permits to define if a dynamic analysis needs to be performed. First step is to calculate natural frequency, also called eigen frequency. This frequency is an indicator of the bridge dynamic response. In particular, we have to confirm if eigen frequency is within Eurocode limits. The limits are estimated from span length of the bridge, here 75 meters. About the analysis method for the natural frequency calculation, I used eigenvectors with subspace iterations. This method is appropriated for large-scale large structures without too many degrees of freedom. Now let's see how to configure this analysis in Midas program. First of all, in structure tab, we have to convert self-weight in masses in vertical direction. Then, we configure eigenvalue analysis in the analysis tab. Subspace iteration method is selected. After performing the analysis, we can verify vibration mode shapes and see which eigenvalue corresponds to each mode. First mode corresponds to the natural bending frequency. We can record the animation. Value of natural bending frequency is around 4.2 cycles per second. Now let's see the mode 2. Second mode corresponds to the natural torsional frequency. For this mode, natural frequency is around 6.3 cycles per second. Let's get back into Eurocode flowchart. As you might have noticed, first natural bending frequency is over the upper limits defined as per Eurocode. Again, bending frequency is not within limits of figure 6.10. Therefore, we have to verify a second criterion, which is the ratio between first natural bending frequency and nat natural torsional frequency. About this criterion, natural torsional frequency is over the first natural bending frequency multiplied by 1.2. As a consequence, 
Flowchart leads us to an overcriterion that depends on the maximum speed of highway traffic. Concerning this last criterion, maximum speed divided by first natural bending frequency has to be lower than a specific ratio depending on the span length and the annual mass supported by the bridge. This ratio is estimated as per Eurocode 1 section 2 in table F.1. For this study, maximum speed of trains is low enough and a dynamic analysis is not required. Dynamic analysis is not required, but we still have to perform static analysis using dynamic coefficient of railway traffic as per Eurocodes. One of the structural elements to be checked is the Warren structure. We will verify structural steel as per Eurocode 3. In particular, Midas Civil propose a design tab with steel analysis for beam elements. Three different limit states are checked. First one is the ultimate limit state. For this limit state, beam section is classified in order to estimate if the plastic resistance can be reached or not. Axial resistance, shear resistance, and bending resistance will be calculated, and the program will also check the interaction between forces and moments. For these verifications, we need to be careful and pay attention to the parameters used for bending resistance and buckling resistance. For example, on the right part of the screen, Warren structure axial force is displayed with ultimate limit state combination. For top cords under compression, buckling lengths correspond to the element's length, that is to say 15 meters. Second limit state is the serviceability limit state. For this state, displacements of the structure need to be checked, in particular vertical deflection of the bridge under vertical train load. Final limit state is an important design criterion, fatigue analysis. Under traffic vertical load cases, variation of combined stress will be checked. Fatigue check for steel materials is not included into steel design tab but we will verify later fatigue stress variation with a further analysis. Now it's time to perform static analysis and observe main results. In results tab, you can configure each load combinations for each material design. For steel design, I configured ultimate limit state combination and also serviceability combination. About load cases, we have vertical train load, which correspond to the main variable action. Braking load and centrifugal loads are also defined. And wind loads and temperature effects are here considered as secondary lo load cases. I also created a load combination for fatigue load that correspond to LM71 model with a specific dynamic coefficient. Now I want to display bending moments for ultimate limit state combination. So I select results tab and beam diagrams. Ultimate limit state is selected. And we want to check bending moments. For a better visibility, I only select Warren structure. So I activate only Warren structure group. I also want to display dummy beam that correspond to the railway track. And as you can see, one Warren truss has higher bending values because of the curved railway track. Now, if I only activate transverse composite beams, 
you can see that bending moment distribution is coherent with the railway track and position of vertical train load. Here is the demi beam position. Now let's display the axial load distribution for Warren structure. I will only select one Warren truss. Here is the lateral view of the Warren structure. And results are also logical. You can see top cords under compression and bottom cords under traction. As each load combination is defined, we can set common parameters. We consider that structure is unbraced. About buckling length, the length by default will be used, that is to say, the beam length of top cords. About equivalent uniform moment factors, default values are used. These factors are equal to 1 as a precaution. Biaxial moments are checked at the same location. Now we select steel material with the appropriated yield strength for design. Equivalent moment factor is equal to 1. Now we can perform steel checking. Ultimate limit state combinations for steel design will be used. After performing calculation, a result table is displayed. We can check design ratio for each structural steel component. Now, let's have a look on ratio diagram results. Combined ratio is selected in order to take into account all forces and moments. As we noticed before with forces diagram, one Warren structure has higher ratio than the other because of curved railway track. Highest ratio corresponds to the top section of Warren truss. Here is the highest ratio for top cords at mid span. We can also analyze results in details. A synthesis of Eurocode verifications appear. Load combinations are detailed. Classification of section is also indicated. Axial and buckling resistance is checked. As well as shear resistance. At the end of the synthesis, combined resistance is also verified. And you can see that sizing ratio is reached with combination between axial force and bending moments. Thanks to MIDA steel design options, we have checked structural steel elements and validated section properties of Warren structure, as per Eurocode Ultimate Limit State verifications. However, the bridge model only included beam elements.
For this first model, results are accurated as long as the position of checked elements is far enough from loading region, as per saint Vincent principle. This reason is why a local finite element analysis is relevant in complex regions, such as supports region, or also connections between Warren Trust diagonals. In particular, Local finite elements models will be useful for fatigue stress analysis and also the design of local stiffeners. Fatigue analysis will be done considering Eurocode train traffic, the model LM71. Stress variations under this model will be checked and multiplied by a realistic dynamic coefficient that takes into account the traffic speed. Dynamic coefficient for fatigue analysis is estimated as per Eurocode 1 section 2 in Annex D. Parameters are determinant length and also traffic speed. Calculation leads to a dynamic coefficient of 1.11. You can notice that this value is lower than dynamic coefficient of 1.25 that was used for structural analysis. Among the different fatigue coefficients, damage equivalent factor is required. This coefficient is estimated as per Eurocode 3 and depends on the number of highway tracks supported by the bridge, length of the influence line, traffic per year in terms of annual mass, and finally design, design life. Last but not least, element required to fatigue analysis is detail category. Detail category depends on the way structure assembly is done, such as welded joints properties, or also geometrical aspect. Detail category is defined as per Eurocode 3, section 1.9, according to the assembly method. To illustrate the importance of geometric properties, let's have a look on this table extract. Here, a gusset plate is welded to another plate. Depending on the gusset radius we choose, detail category can be 50 or almost twice for a radius over 150 mm. This is why the most economical method is to ensure smooth transitions. On the right part of the screen, you can see finite elements model for diagonal connection structure. Large radius transition is included for web components. In order to prepare local modeling, a good method is to draw elements using an appropriated program. For this Warren Trust study, I draw the web perimeter of Warren Structure components in the diagonal connection region. Then I imported DXF format in order to import nodes positions. The imported nodes will be useful to generate structural plate elements that constitute the local design region. Now let me share the method I used to include local finite elements model in the bridge model. One trick is to intersect frame elements when importing nodes. Then we can delete beam elements that are included in the plate element zone, that is to say the finite element zone. To ensure forces transfer between plate elements and beam elements, we use specific boundaries called rigid links. Rigid links constrain degrees of freedom of slave nodes to a master node. This boundary option ensures mechanical continuity between plate and beam elements. Master node will correspond to the end of beam elements. Slave nodes will be peripheral nodes of plate elements. In the picture below, I used rigid link in the connection area between Warren diagonal components. Bottom chord and also lateral composite beams. On the right part of the screen, you can see the configuration process. If construction stage analysis is performed, as in this model, we need to pay attention to groups. Rigid links are associated with a boundary group, and plate elements are also associated with a structure group. These groups will be activated in first stage with structural steel elements. 
Here is an extract of one local finite element model. I wanted to check diagonal connections at the first diagonal's meeting point next to supports. If I display beam section, you can notice that plate positions is in accordance with beam eccentricity. Alignment is ensured. Now I displayed rigid links to show you the mechanical continuity between plate structure and beam structure. Now I only want to display plate elements. About the local plate structure, I proposed a radius transition to connect diagonal flanges. As well, bottom cords longitudinal stiffener is included and correspond to transverse beam's top flange position. A radius transition is also configured at transverse beam, sorry, is also configured at transverse beam embedded region for girders flange. About rigid links creation, I selected the supports boundary group because it's the first one to be activated. Master node corresponds to beam load, beam element node, and slave node corresponds to plate nodes. A rigid body connection is selected because of weld. Now, if we display the table, we can confirm that boundaries belong to a support group. Now I want to display the connection between transverse composite beams and bottom cord. Here you can see transition between transverse composite beams with a concrete slab and plate elements. Now I will display rigid links. In total, we have seven rigid links connecting this plate element structure with the beam model. Now that local plate elements are included in the bridge model, it's time to perform analysis and check stresses for plate elements. In particular, combined stress will be checked. For ultimate limit states and for sections that cannot reach a plastic resistance, 
we need to verify that combined stress is lower than yield resistance. Also, for fatigue resistance, combined stress will be checked under train traffic load. As well, local models will be the opportunity to verify local stiffness. Pictures, di pictures displayed correspond to different regions where I modeled plate elements for a local analysis. On the top, supports region is modeled with local vertical stiffeners. On the bottom, top diagonal connections is modeled. Let's get back to our local model. After performing analysis, we go to results tab. We want to check plate stresses. Construction stage analysis was performed, so I can control element stresses for each step. First step is structural steel activation. And we can display combined stress for this first construction stage step. Now I select post construction stage in order to check fatigue stress. I will only active plate elements for a better visibility. We can notice that higher stress variation is in diagonal flange. We can also check stress in bottom cord stiffeners. Finally, by activating local region, we can display stress in transverse beam embedded area. Another application of finite element analysis is to check local web openings in girders. In this study, web opening is required in order to include green age pipe in the composite deck. This model permits to confirm if additional stiffeners are required or not. In the local region, where steel eye section is modeled with plate elements, composite beam element was replaced by a concrete beam element. This concrete beam corresponds to concrete slab under compression. So we have plate element for structural steel and beam element for concrete slab. Continuity of composite section is established. I also added beam end releases in order to make the concrete slab transfer compression only, without any shear transfer. As a consequence, vertical shear is transmitted to steel web only in accordance to Eurocode design. Here are displayed the combined stress in steel eye section. About ultimate limit state, combined stress is lower than steel yield resistance, and concerning fatigue, Combined stress under LM71 model is acceptable. Therefore, I conclude that web stiffeners are not required around the opening. Now that steel analysis is performed, we will conclude this study with composite deck design. As a recap, here are the different parameters. Steel eye section is modeled with laminate steel girders parameter. Structural concrete correspond to poured in place concrete, so precast panels are neglected. Construction stage analysis is also performed 
and we included time-dependent properties associated with concrete slab material. Moreover, composite section is activated after concrete pouring step. Before we design composite structure, I'd like to recap the construction stages and detail the composite beam displacements for each step. First step implies structural steel only. Concrete part of composite beams is not activated. Next step is concrete pouring. Concrete is modeled with a beam load. Here I display the wet concrete load. First step is shrinkage. Composite section is now activated. And you can see that concrete slab is displayed. In next step, we activate longitudinal concrete beams. These beams have no bus density. And now, Re-edge model is established. Then we activate superstructures designed as beam load over longitudinal concrete beams. And last step is demi beam activation for moving load analysis. Demi beam is selected in red. Vertical deflection at mid-span is around 7 cm after superstructure loading. Let's get back to the design of composite section. As per your records, we have different limit states verifications. About ultimate limit states, as for steel design, a classification of section is established. Then, the resistance of composite section will be checked for bending moments, vertical shear, and interaction between both effects. As no forces are directly applied on bottom flanges, there is no need to perform lateral torsional buckling analysis. Composite connection is also checked, and we will design longitudinal shear connectors. Using MIDAS, we can also verify resistance of shear connectors with fatigue load combination. About serviceability load combinations, we will check stresses in each material included in composite section. Longitudinal shear connectors are also verified with serviceability loading. The picture displayed showed the composite beam I included in the design. I selected mid-transverse pan and ending position for different beam positions that seemed relevant to me. On this slide, I sum up shear connectors parameters related to composite elements with steel eye section. Spacing, sizes, and tensile strengths of connectors are required details. We can get back to our model and select the design tab. Eurocode 4 is selected. Here are Eurocode coefficients. For fatigue strengths, 1.35 factor is indicated because of highway traffic. As explained before, we select every verification excepted lateral torsional buckling and transverse force. We indicate material for structural steel, concrete, and concrete reinforcement. Longitudinal reinforcement in the concrete slab has to be specified. One method to locate reinforcement is to generate a guideline. Here, section include 14 mm steel bars with 10 cm spacing. So we have two lines for top and bottom position.
concerning design positions, I created a specific group which correspond to relevant positions along the highway line track. So you can see in red the elements I want to check. And here is the dummy beam for moving load analysis. Shear connectors parameters are also set. And for fatigue verification of shear connectors, damage equivalent factors are required. We can also check in the table the values we entered. Here are the fat fatigue combinations and also serviceability combinations. After performing design, we can also print results and export an Excel tab. Let me show you an overview of the results tab exported by Midas program. As you can see, section dimensions are described. as well as properties before and after activating composite section. We also have cracked section properties. For each verification, name of sizing load combination is specified. Classification of section is done depending on steel geometrical properties. Bending moment is checked as well as shear resistance. Here is the resistance of shear connectors. Fatigue resistance of shear connectors is also checked. About serviceability limitation, combined stress is checked for structural steel. Concrete and reinforcement stress is also indicated. I completed this Excel tab with a ratio of Eurocode verifications. As you can see, for this element, saturation ratio is around 80%. It's time now to conclude this presentation. The webinar goal was to develop a method that permits to design a bridge with several structural types and using Midas Civil program. An efficient method is to create a bridge model with beam elements. In particular, for preliminary sizing, beam sections are easy to adapt. This elements type is also compatible with Midas Civil tools that are still design and composite design as per Eurocodes. For a further analysis of structural steel, finite element analysis is required and we observed the benefits of rigid links in order to include a local plate model in a large scale structure. About the bridge that has been modeled, traffic type was impacting and fatigue stress may be the main criterion that leads to bridge components sizes. I will finish this webinar by concluding that no matter what tools or program we use for a structure design, we need to keep in mind the practical part of our profession and pay attention to the feasibility of an assembly and more generally pay attention to the construction stages that could impact design. 
Thank you very much for attending. I hope this webinar met your expectations and that you learned more about wear and trust design. Please let me know if you have questions and I'll do my best to give you further information.